So they call visual snow and orphan disease. It doesn't receive proper funding because they say not enough people have it, when that's clearly not the case. Because the same doctors who I visited and went to their offices, who were literally Googling the condition in front of me because they didn't know what it was, should have seen when they Google visual snow that there is countless people from all over the world ranging from different ages to different walks of life that all have this. And you, you can't ignore the cries of people when there's this many of us. I'm sorry, but if this happened to your daughter, if this happened to your brother, your friend or someone you knew, it wouldn't matter if there were a thousand other people who had it too. You would just care that that one person who you care about is, is enough. All it takes is for one person that you care about to have this, for your life to completely change, for your relationship dynamics to completely change, and that should be enough. So one of the things we're trying to do is get more research focused on this problem uh, and uh, possibly more funding from the government. The government considers it an orphan disease and not an not a important disease, let's put it that way. That's probably too strong a word. But they treat it as an orphan disease and not worth funding because it's, it affects so few people. But it affects a lot of people in total around the world. And, uh, there should be, a, should be more support for that. Funding is difficult for several reasons. One is structural in the way that funding is distributed, and that's based on the fact that you make application to a government-run research institution. Philanthropic funding is, very, is quite rare. Um, and the distribution of those funds is based on the knowledge of the people uh, that assess the applications, very dependent on that. Now because it's a relatively small community, uh, finding somebody who actually has a perception, uh, a realistic perception of what visual snow is and how disruptive it is and how frequent it is, is difficult. So you're, you're submitting to people who know nothing about it, who aren't yet educated and therefore don't give it a high priority. And that's just the nature of being in a relatively small research pool by comparison with a country like the United States. Um, the uh, second issue is, uh, you know, the lack of philanthropic funding in Australia. Th there are some very generous groups, uh, but they're relatively small because it's a different society than, say, the United States, where philanthropy is, is a tradition. Um, most people in Australia feel that they pay for this sort of stuff through their taxes. So it's, uh, it's a perceptual issue in part and it's also the fact that um, there's a limit to how many times you can ask people to do research for nothing. I think doctors need to imagine that this was happening to somebody in their life and stop looking at it from a statistical standpoint, which by the way the statistics are there. We are people, we do exist and yes there's a lot of us.